Adam Ragusea inspired pan pizza was excellent, but I wanted to see if I can make it not only bigger, but better. So today, in the Anabolic Laboratory, we will be making a 12 inch pizza that'll fit right into your calories and will only take you about an hour to make. My name is Nick, I have my master's in exercise physiology and I make low calorie, high protein recipes such as this one and do full days of eating, food reviews, etc. So if you're into that kind of thing, like this video and subscribe to the channel. If you're ready to not only have your pizza, but eat it too, then let's get into it. This dough is going to come together super quick, but we are going to use mixers or machines or whatever to help us in this one hour pizza from scratch recipe. You can definitely do this by hand. It'll take you about an extra 15 minutes, but either way, an hour and 15 minute from scratch pizza is still great. However, we're going to start with double zero flour. For almost any of these, you can sub out different ingredients. I will put them in the pinned comment below. However, this is just for the best flavor, the best texture, the best chewiness of the crust, the best sauce, etc. Also, the amounts that I tell you will make two doughs. If you only want one dough, use half of all these ingredients. Again, everything will be in the pinned comment below. 120 grams of double zero flour. I've got my Ninja food processor on a scale and I'm just going to spoon it until I get 120 grams. The dark horse ingredient in this recipe is vital wheat gluten flour. What is vital wheat gluten flour? Essentially, it is flour that is all protein. I tested out about 20 pizzas to make sure that this was still great. It's going to be absolutely excellent and that is coming from a Chicago pizza snob and food snob in general. 40 grams. Next ingredient is diastatic malt powder. I will defer to Adam Ragusea's video if you wanna learn more about it. Two grams. One gram of garlic powder, two grams of salt, and six grams of olive oil. I wanna give this a nice pre-mix, so I'm gonna give it about 10 seconds on high to get everything blended together. <laughs> Now we introduce our secret ingredient that really allows this to be a one hour from scratch pizza. And I found this out from Brian Lagerstorm, Lagerstorm, or formerly known as Weeds and Sardines, which I started watching because he made a Chicago deep dish pizza that looked absolutely delicious. And he was the inspiration for this recipe, so major shout out to him. Now don't ask me how this works, but I do recommend you check out Brian's channel. He's an awesome dude and puts out great content. You can use any beer, but my beer of choice is a Coors Light. We're barely using anything for one pizza dough. We're talking like 15 calories. It's not going to affect your gains. You're not going to gain weight. Don't worry about it, and we'll get this into a cup. We want to get this to about 90 degrees. So I'm going to put this in the microwave. Usually it takes about 20 seconds or so, but use a food thermometer if you need to. I almost forgot the damn dry yeast. We need to put six grams of dry yeast in here. We definitely want to go with the quick acting or instant yeast because this is a one hour pizza and all. No matter how many times you make something, if you're not paying attention, you could definitely still mess it up. All right, our beer is at about 93 degrees. We are perfect. And what we're going to do is put the food processor on high and while it's on high we're going to slowly pour in <clears throat> the beer and you'll see it start to come together then it'll start to be little tiny chunks and then it'll be a ball it takes about 30 seconds maybe 45 seconds and your dough is ready and just like that our dough is done we're going to take this out here now this is a pretty low moisture dough so you won't have too much trouble handling it now i know the title says no need but we do need to roll it around just for a minute here to get everything together so literally Really just roll it around here. If you want and you have the calories, you can finish off your Coors Light. I'm gonna weigh my dough out, 295. Since I have dough for two pizzas, I wanna split this in half right now, and that'll be about 147 grams a piece. Our dough is separated. I'm just wetting a rag right now from the dollar store that we're gonna just put over these so they can rise for about 15 minutes, and then we're gonna make our sauce. You can definitely buy a pre-made pizza sauce, but it has nothing on a homemade sauce, and it literally takes five minutes to come together with this handy dandy immersion blender. This is like a no dish recipe as well. Whatever you're gonna store your pizza sauce in, put it on top of the scale and we're gonna go to town 
because once we put everything in there, all we're gonna do is blend it and we're done. I've done this multiple times. We're gonna run through these ingredients. San Marzano tomatoes, tomato paste, fresh garlic or roasted garlic. I'm going with roasted garlic here today. I use this roasted garlic in my chipotle aioli recipe. I would highly recommend checking that out if you want a low calorie chipotle aioli. Onion powder, oregano, crushed red pepper, salt, swerve, and olive oil. And after just about 30 seconds, we are smooth as butter, baby. I've still got about seven minutes until my dough is ready to be stretched. So what can I do? I can shave down my mozzarella. What I like to do is go right to the deli and ask them to cut off about a pound chunk of cheese so you can freshly shred it yourself. That is definitely the freshest, the most tastiest, and the best way to go. Do not use pre-shredded cheese. It doesn't brown the same, it tastes shittier, and it's not as fresh. Speaking of shittier, are you sick of using shittier pre-workouts? If so, I'd suggest using Gorilla Mode for a clinically dosed top tier pre-workout. And use code E4CM at checkout for 10% off your purchase. Back to the za. This takes five minutes and I will see you back when it's time to stretch the dough. I'm gonna show you two techniques. First, we need to get our parchment paper and rip off about, I would say, 18 inch long pieces and we're gonna lay them flat here. What we're gonna do next is grab whatever type of spray oil that you like. Right now I got canola spray, really doesn't matter, but this will make it not stick to the parchment after it rises. So what we're gonna do is go one, two, three, and then we're gonna move on to our next piece of paper. One, two, three. I'm just gonna stack these on top. Our hands are gonna get a little bit oily right now, but it is what it is. We're having a one hour goddamn pizza and it's going to be delicious. Again, for the second pizza, one, two, three. One, two, three. As a little bonus, you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna add some cornmeal on the bottom to these so it gives it more of a real Chicago type thin crust pizza vibe. Now, as you can see, our dough has risen quite a bit for 15 minutes and we're just gonna take one of them and I'm still gonna cover the other one for now just to make sure it doesn't dry out and we're just gonna get it into about I don't know four or five inches and this is the easier way to do it by the way and once you got a little bit of size here I'm gonna plop it right down onto our parchment and then we cover with the oil side the top piece and we're gonna roll this bad boy out now just be gentle we don't gotta go super hard right now if it's not a perfect circle that's okay and you could roll it out to your desired thickness, but this will go a good 12 inches and still be decently thick. I compare this to like a frozen pizza when you do it this way, at least for the crust. There is still what I would say more rise than a frozen pizza, but the crust definitely gets super dense and crispy in the oven. And it might take you a minute, but just slowly work it. And don't worry about how flat this gets. We're gonna give it a second rise and it's gonna poof up a little bit. This took me about three minutes and we got our pizza rolled out as you can see. And if it's sticking a little bit, we might just have to spray a little bit more olive oil because I don't want it to stick after it rises. Now that that one's done, I'm gonna put it in the microwave where it's the most warm in my kitchen. Again, on our bottom side, I'm gonna put some cornmeal down just to get that authentic Chicago taste. Now for this one, since I'm gonna be handling it a lot more, I'm gonna put some spray on my hands as well, but this is gonna take you a few extra minutes. Again, this will be added time onto the hour, but for me, I like that thick bite of a dough that you could actually bite into and it's soft and chewy. Now I'm certainly no master at this. I do this at a rookie level, but Brian on his page, when you go check out his one hour pizza video, will show you how to do this with his method. I've gotten decent at his method, but it's not perfect by any means. So I'm gonna do what I have to do and I will see you back once this one is stretched. I'm done rolling out my second dough. As you can see, we have a nice thick crust that's gonna rise once it's in the oven. And all I'm gonna do is cover this up and also put this on top of the other one in the microwave. Don't worry, it'll be fine. We're gonna start the clock half an hour. And at the same time, it takes about half an hour for our oven to heat up. So I'm gonna put this on the highest, highest temperature it'll go which is 525 for me, but do what you can. Also, I have a pizza steel. You don't have to have a pizza steel to make this. The first 10 times I did this, I did not have a pizza steel. However, if you're going to start preheating the oven, I would get 
a tray and start preheating this as well. And as soon as we put everything on our pizza and it's ready to go in the oven, we will put it on this and then we will put it in the oven and it'll help cook the bottom. 30 minutes have came and went. We are now going to top our pizza and bake them. This is gonna be super quick as well. So typically you put as much pizza sauce as you want, but mine ended up being about 90 to 100 grams per pizza. All I do is put our pizza sauce that we just made on the scale and I take it until it says minus 90 or minus 95, whatever. And by the way, since we did this now, we don't have to make a pizza sauce for another nine pizzas, and we don't have to shred more cheese for another five pizzas. You do this once, you have it throughout the week, and then all you have to do is prep the dough. I like to add a little bit of parm right on top of the sauce so we get that nice umami flavor. I put the brick on the scale, zero it out, and then I shred about five grams on top. For Parmesan, a little goes a long way. Next, we got our fat-free cheese. We're only gonna use some of this, but it helps add some protein while adding some cheese. I know I said don't use shredded, but there is no fat-free bricks, so I have to use shredded. So we're gonna use two ounces or 56 grams of the fat-free cheese. Then we're gonna put our bag of freshly shredded mozzarella right on top of the scale, zero that out, and we're gonna get 70 grams out of this. I like to put more cheese towards the middle and less cheese on the outside, because as it melts, it'll spread out. And our last ingredient is turkey pepperoni, and we are going to use 28 grams. And we are ready to cook. If you're not using the pizza steel and you had this preheating, obviously I would have a glove on, you just slide the parchment paper right onto here and put it in the oven and you're good to go. You can also use that to put it onto the pizza steel, but I just got an actual, I don't know, pizza peel. Again, we're gonna put the parchment right on top of there and we're gonna slide this in. On the steel, it takes about eight or nine minutes, but ovens may vary. Make sure you keep an eye on it around seven minutes. The bottom will really start to brown and almost burn if you cook it for too long. If you put it on a regular tray, I was finding it took me about 12 to 14 minutes to cook. But again, keep an eye on it around the 10 minute mark and just try to make sure nothing burns. While the other one cooks, we are going to build our second pizza. And look how beautiful this rose. Look how thick of a crust we have. It's gonna be nice and chewy, and we're gonna do a little bit extra for this one in case you wanna do your pizza a little bit different. We're gonna sauce it and parm it the exact same way. This one does take a little bit less sauce because we're not gonna go edge to edge. So this one I usually use about 70 to 80 grams of sauce, just depending on how much you like. We're gonna put 56 grams of fat-free cheese just like the last one, but with this one, we're only gonna put 56 grams of shredded cheese. I'm only gonna use half the pepperoni on this one. We're gonna make a half pepperoni, half cheese pizza. And to make up those calories, I'm gonna put a full ounce of fresh mozzarella on top. It just adds more flavor. I got my 28 gram chunk, and I'm just gonna spread it out evenly throughout the pizza. I got 14 grams of pepperoni on here. The last thing I'm gonna do right before I put this in to make sure the crust doesn't get too brown and hard is I'm just gonna put water. I think I learned this from an Adam Ragusa video. Actually, I know I did. However, what he did was he wetted just water on the brush and he painted the crust so the crust doesn't burn while it's in the oven. So as soon as this one's done, I'll be back and then we'll talk about this one once this one's done because we still have one more thing to do. All right, this pizza is absolutely gorgeous. Now we're just gonna wet the crust like I said and then we're gonna put this one in for eight minutes as well. To make sure this pizza doesn't get too soft, I usually like to put it on a wire rack. So the pizza should pretty much just slide right off here. We're gonna look at her from behind, always the best view. Now we got a little bit of almost burntness, but that's perfect to me and that's why you really gotta keep an eye on it. That was about eight minutes and 30 seconds. And the top, it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna play some B-roll. I mean, you can't beat it. And if the top isn't ready, but the bottom is already browned and you don't want it to get any more brown, throw it under the broiler. And then once it's under the broiler for a minute, the top will be brown and everything will be perfect. It's about four o'clock. I haven't eaten a goddamn thing. We're gonna slice this and I'm probably gonna burn my mouth, but that's okay. Let's listen to the crust. If you told me this was a diet or healthy pizza, I would have no goddamn idea. If you told me there was fat-free cheese on here, I would have no goddamn idea. I got sauce in every bite. I got cheese in every bite. It's super thin. There's still some rise to it though. The crust is super crispy and obviously like half the calories of what a frozen pizza is. Our second pizza is done. <laughs> I mean, look at that. You can't, you can't beat it. It's literally bubbling brown on top. Look how big the crust is. I don't even have to press on it so you could hear the crunch from the outside. 
It's not too brown. It's not gonna be super hard like a thin crust pizza. I would say if you get a couple uh, pizzas under your belt, this is the way to go to hand roll it to get that nice thick pizza. Now I'm gonna get this on our rack and we're gonna do one more thing to this pizza to really send it over the edge. A light butter, parm, garlic, parsley, 10 seconds in the microwave, mix it together real quick. And for about 20 extra calories, we're going to have a Parmesan garlic buttered crust. You cannot beat it. And once I'm done buttering this crust, I'm gonna throw it back in the oven for about 20 seconds or so, just to get it nice and hot again. It is now smelling like garlic bread in here and I love every single second of it. Let's cut this pie open and go over the macros. I mean, you could just hear it. We have little spots of white from the fresh mozzarella that aren't brown, but it's still going to be delicious. And let's not forget about that cornmeal on the bottom. Absolute perfection. Let's go over the macros so you know exactly how many are in this. So you're like, holy shit, I need to go get this stuff right now and make it tonight. For a full pizza, the whole thing, every single 12 inch inch of it, we're looking at 750 calories, 69 protein, 60 carb, 24 fat. Some of you may only be able to eat half the pizza for your calorie allotment, but almost every single night I have been able to clear out 750 calories and able to eat a whole damn pizza. It is so damn good. It is worth every single calorie and I highly suggest you make it because it's done in about an hour. Subscribe to the channel, use any of my codes to help support me make more bomb ass recipes just like this one. And until next time, I will see you in that next one. Do see.